for spending these few minutes listening to the Word of God. We pray that His grace and glory will always be with you. Have a lovely week and see you next time. There's power in your name that they took the shame away. I'm gonna bite, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna tell the devil, get away. Now I can't stand too. I know that I could not fall. Not because I got it all, but because I'm still. Chill.
Praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord for bringing us to another month. And this is the last month in the year 2017. We return all the glory unto his faithfulness because in the course of this year, many things have actually happened. But in all, we are more than conquerors. To him be the glory. Shall we pray together? Blessed Savior, we want to appreciate you because of your mercy that has brought us to the last month in the year 2017. We cannot pretend or deny that we are not aware of what has happened around us. We've attended so many funeral service, services and these people, they are not aged people. But your faithfulness to us and your commitment to your promises to us is that thousands will fall by our side and 10,000 on the other side. Your word to us is that we can only behold that you now come near us. We appreciate your name. Lord, this morning again, especially th these three days that we've been waiting on you, this morning you come to us that either to up to now, you've not asked me. And to us, we felt that we've asked and asked and asked again. But you are saying that up to now, you've not even asked me. In other words, you are always ready to hear us. You just want us to come so that you can bless us. But the question we are asking ourselves this morning and from the passage you'll be speaking to us is that why are you doing all of these things to us and for us? Are you just like Father Christmas? In fact, the contemporary Father Christmas, they collect money before you see them. We know there is a purpose in your mind why you are doing all of this. We ask of you this day, Lord, that the very purpose why you are so committed to us May you help us to hear your voice today and make us to come to the understanding of all these reasons for we've prayed in Jesus' name. Our text today is from the book of Isaiah chapter 5 where we are going to take our thought this morning. It's from the book of Isaiah chapter 5. And uh, we are studying the first ten verses of the Bible. Isaiah chapter five, the first five. I mean, ten verses. Okay. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well beloved at a vineyard in a very fruitful ear. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And it looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth white grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, Judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth white grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned, nor digged. But there shall come breeze and thorns. I will also command the clouds that there rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And the men of Judah is pleasant plants. And it look for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no 
place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the head. In my head said the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fear without inhabitants. Yeah, ten acres of vineyard shall, be, shall yield one, one bath, and the seed of an homer shall yield an ephah. We bless the name of the Lord. This morning we are going to study this lyric of song composed by the prophets of the Lord to his people, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And this uh, exhortation, I'm going to bring it from one segment to another. The first segment is the commitment of the, of the vineyard owner to his vine. We want to check the commitment of the owner of this vineyard to his vine. From this first one, I want to believe that the Lord has actually sent different prophets, his teachers, to his people to call their attention to the very purpose why he was busy doing all he was doing for his people so that they will come to that understanding. And at this point in time, as we have it from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 36, that they mock my servants. They make mess of my messages until my wrath came upon them and I destroyed them unto the point of no remedy. This is the state of house of Israel and Judah. At a point in time, the messenger of the Lord will come with the message from the Lord. They pick the message they look at the messenger. They make mockery of both the message and the messenger. At this point in time, the Lord says, I know what I will do. I'm going to pass this message on to my people again because of my commitment to my people and to my house. But it's going to be in a song. And we have the lyrics before us. The first aspect is the commitment of this man, the owner of this fireyard, to this van. From first one. He said, my well beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. This place is talking about the location of this vineyard. The man said, I didn't plant this vineyard just anywhere. But why I was planning within myself to have this garden. With good understanding of agriculture. I planted my vineyard. In a very fruitful hill, very fertile land. Because it's going to be out of wickedness for me to come after some months or years to be expecting fruit from this vineyard if the location is not correct. I want to believe that with a little of agriculture, we know that before you embark on farming, you have to, one of those principal things you have to consider is the soil, whether it's fertile or not. So the Lord is speaking to his people. And he told them, in terms of location, I've located you well. The answer of Israel that the Lord is talking about is you and her. And I want us to look inward this morning to evaluate our lives. Can you see the commitment of the Lord as per your location in life? Many of us, we are not first born. We are not the first child in our family or in your community. But today, even your first born, the first born of your parents, before they do anything, they must get in touch with you. They want to hear your approval. Church, praise the Lord. You are not the firstborn. Even the culture or cultural practice of your background will not allow your position in the family to decide for the family. But your firstborn will have to do that. But you know even before that firstborn will go to the elders in the land, he will consult you and get your approval. Even if at all you should tell your, your, your brother or your sister that, please, I'm busy. I'm in a meeting. And before we have a chance to respond, it's going to be by 5 p.m. You know that she must wait for you. The 
many of us, the Lord is saying that maybe you are thinking because of your education and your exposure in life and your hard work and the way you, you, you everything you, you, you put in, that is why you, you are occupying the place you have today. Have you forgotten that many, many of your mates, you will perform more than you when you are in school. When you meet with them, when you discuss with them, you have every reason to look up to God and say, Daddy, thank you. The Lord is saying from first one, is that your location is not out of your power, but out, is out of his own plan for your life. We have so many people in the church. This church setting, we have our pastor, we have the diaconate, we have members, we have ministry heads and the departmental heads. The Lord is even saying that for you to be a pastor of this church like our pastor, the Lord is saying, and not ordinary Baptist church. Praise the Lord. You know that near state Baptist church is not ordinary Baptist church. We are unique. I've not seen Pastor Kunat in person. In fact, the figure, where that picture, but I've been hearing about him. And for you, if you just introduce yourself, I'm a member of New Esther, I say, ah, that church. And you know the meaning of that church. You know the meaning. I was in far away in Mino. And one of the professor was telling me that over the years I've been hearing of New Estate Baptist Church and I've been longing to come in contact with the church. Now the Lord has given me the opportunity. The Lord is even telling you that for you to be a member of this church is out of his own purpose. Our deacons is out of God's purpose to be among the authority of this church in a time like this. Oh, verse 2. And he fends it. Protection. And gathered out the stones thereof. And planted it, this vineyard, with the choicest vine. Not ordinary vine. Not useless vine. Not bad species. But the choicest one. Good one. Great one. And built a tower in the midst of it. And we know the the, the function of a tower. There is a place that somebody can climb and you can see afar off. If at all, there is any danger. The Lord is saying that I put everything in place. In fact, I gather out the stones thereof. The Lord has actually gathered so many things for us. Some situations and circumstances that are supposed to finish our finances, the Lord gathered them for us. You see, that child, if you can remember that your child, that you know the way that child is going and the recommendation and observation of doctors, you know that this child will amount to nothing in life. The Lord is telling you and is reminding you and is refreshing your memory this morning that you know the way I gather everything and I made no sense of that situation. He did it on a purpose. Many of us who are being confronted with situation in our office. And even you know that the way the matter was going that time, if not that for the Lord intervention, it could actually lead to the termi I mean, termination of the appointments. But the Lord gathered that stone for you. Hmm. The second aspect of our teaching this morning, the reason for all this. The reason for all this to be. Do we have it up? NIV. Let's have two. First two. Okay. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. The reason for wine press is that he put tower there for security to see from afar off any danger. And that is why many of us will come up. Say, sir, I had a revelation about my son that is in school, about my daughter that is in school. I, I saw her in the midst of bad guys 
and they are just beating her, and they are just beating her. In fact, I've been fasting, I've been praying for the past three days. Pastor, I want you to join us with me so that we can pray together, be prayer of agreement, so that my daughter will not go the way of wicked people. That is watch to her. Ability to see before evil comes. So all of this, he has put in place for you. He said, not only watch to her, there is also wine press. What is the function of wine press? What is the function of wine press, church? After I've harvested all my fruits, I ask a place where I can pack all the fruit and then I press. Wine press, you press. Praise God. <laughs> what you can press. It's very simple. Now why you can press your, your fruit? Oh, the Lord is saying that. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a God of expectation. I'm not, you know, contemporary for that Christmas. Even no, even then, when I was, uh, how old is this boy now? When I was still, but I can still talk of when I was. It doesn't matter how old I am now. When we go to see Father Christmas, they still collect money from us now. I'm not saying Father Christmas that is free. Maybe. Have you seen one? The Lord is even saying that it's not Father Christmas. See all he did. But right from the onset of this uh, vineyard, he positioned wine press. I will do my own part. As you are bringing fruit, I'm expecting to have Jews from this place. So also as the Lord is increasing you, as the Lord is blessing you, as the Lord is doing all of this around you and for you and for your children, the Lord is saying, I have my own expectation from you. I want feedback. And he looked, first to see now, the second aspect, and he looked, I need NIV, because there is one then, 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 I want us to see. Cut out a wine press as well. Then, he's talking about after I've done all of this. He looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruits. And he looked that he should bring forth grapes. And he brought forth wild grapes. When I was coming up, one day the Lord called, I mean, my father called three of us, the first three sons. And he asked us to sit down. We sat down. I didn't know the reason for that meeting. But I think I understand it now, today. And you know, in uh, African culture, your father, anytime they want to discuss serious matter with you, they will call you three times. I don't know whether it's like that in Ebo and Aousa culture, but I know they will call you three times. Say, talk me, talk me, talk me. How many times have I called you? And you also will say, a matter. You know, you, you know that when your father is doing all of that, you know there is a serious matter. And you also will not be bold to say, a matter. You say, a matter. Say, open your mouth very well. Say, three times. My dad started to tell us that I want you to know the reason why I'm sending you to school. Maybe he observed that we're becoming playful and we're not taking our education serious. He gave us two reasons. Number one, I want you to be independent of me in years to come. You see, when you ask for money, you ask for 1,000, I will send you 2,000. Call us one after the other. I have my reason for it. The time is coming that I will not be able to work again. All this property that Lord has given to me and my pension will take care of me. The house rent I'll be co collecting from all this property that you are aware of will be enough for me to take care of me. 
But the reason why I'm making all these investments is for you to be independent of me. So that the money I used to be eating will not be the one that I'll be using, I mean, I'll be giving you to be eating in years to come. And then number two, you look at our firstborn. I don't want you to depend on your, on your, on your brother. You look at my, our second born, I don't want you to depend on me. I'm the third born. He looks at top I don't want you to depend on Deji. Deji, I don't want you to depend on Adebo Ali. He prayed with us. The Lord is talking to you this morning. The reason why he's doing all of this thing for you. He's telling us from this place that the reason is because he wants you to bring forth what type of graves? Good graves, good fruit. It's painful. Anytime I speak with my dad today, anytime I have a chance to travel home, maybe once in a year or twice, and we're talking, there is a serious pain and wound in my father's heart. Anytime we are talking, I said, this person called me that you borrow him money. But I didn't borrow him, but I sent him 20,000 naira. There is pain in the heart of my father. My dad will always tell me, I work, I labor to train you. I nearly work naked so that this will not be my experience. But your brother he didn't allow it to come to pass. Now he's begging every one of you to be submitting money before he could take care of his family. This is the pain of the father. Many of us, the fruit we are giving our heavenly father, who is so committed to us, is causing him pain and agony. The reason for all our discipleship exposure the reason why he has given us four servants in this church. The reason why you see, I'm sorry, I'm not just, you know, projecting anybody. The reason why Pastor Kuna will be preaching and be sweating with all this industrial AC. I don't know whether you ever thought of it. I'm saying it last Sunday when I was preaching in Oka, I told them, when I was sweating, I was sweating, you know, I, I told them, I, since I entered Lagos, I'm not, Ordinary one has never come out. He can't. They are too, they are very big and uh, sometimes they could be disturbing during midweek, midweek service. So I know the reason why some people will sit in between. So when you see a man of God preaching in this kind of atmosphere and everywhere to the outer jacket he sweats, you should know that the Lord is making investment over your life. This is an investment. And it could be painful when the fruit thereof is bad and sour. I want to bring unto you two fruits or three before I go to the last aspect. The secret made us to know that in the last days, men shall be lovers or players than things of God or than God. Are we on the same page? One of those things we see in the last days is that men, the scripture used the word men, shall become players, I mean lovers of players, than things of God. The first bad fruit I'm seeing today about contemporary Christians is the issue of end time players. Anything that will discomfort us, anything that we demand for you to go to a state of, of, of stress for the Lord, you are not ready and explaining him. I look at God. I look at Jesus. From the book of Revelation, he gave us the scripture of the city has gone ahead to prepare for us. The cities, I mean the streets thereof, are made of pure, transparent gold. The scripture said there is no darkness. There is no need for PACN. 
He made everything good and powerful for us. He left the glory of that city. He left his Shekinah glory. And when he came to this world as a small baby, a small boy, the scripture said there was no space in the hotel. There was no space in the hospital. But he found himself in the midst of animals. Gida Akuya. Gida Akuya. He lived in this place for you and for me. Oh Lord, ordinary earthly king called Herod was looking for the king of glory to waste. And I can see Maria and Mary and, and Joseph carry Jesus, the almighty God, from one place to another in order to protect and preserve his life. So I can see the created thing that is Herod pursuing the creator, his creator. Jesus lowered himself, as we have the account from the book of Philip, he lowered himself to that point in the state of humility because of you. But the end time player has captured your heart that you cannot undergo any stress even for this king that love you this way and in this manner. Let me come a bit practical. One of the feedback I've been hearing, I've been receiving, especially on this, our church threatening outreaches. How many of us are aware of that? That there is church threatening outreach that is going on? Clock. And I'm asking a question. When is the, I, because I don't know if I thought there is any office now that they resume by 6 a.m. But I learned that your, the resumption time has not changed. It's still 7.38. Abby, but you leave from Suru Lere to Victoria Island as early as 4.30. You get to Victoria Island as early as 6. You just rested your, you have to rest your car seat to do what? To sleep. Waiting for the gate man to open. But if it is just service, 9 o'clock, this place will not be filled up. This leaf extension, here, we are tiny. You know the way you see Sunday? You wake up, any time you want to wake up. In fact, when you are dressing on Sunday, you put on your whatever you want to put on, and you put on your skirt, you go and check glass, I mean a mirror, you watch and watch and say, okay. After 10 minutes, you put another thing. Why? This is the day of the Lord. And it will not, it will not give you query. It will not terminate your appointment. But on, ah, I'm coming to that aspect. But on, on Monday, you know that human being that call your boss, you know if you late for five minutes, he'll give you quit. In fact, I see many of you, you dress as you drive. Am I correct? As you are driving, you are dressing. In fact, it's after you've resumed. Some people help you to know because this button will go up. This one will go up. It's not new to them. They know the nature of Lagos. Why can't you transfer the same nature of Lagos to the things of God? And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you between me and my vineyard. I can see the Savior saying that I'm, I'm, I'm on purpose. I can see the return that they have given unto me. I can see the way they are reciprocating my gesture of love. I can see it. But this will not continue. But before I will come with my own judgments, I want you men of flesh and blood to judge first before I will judge. I love God. He will not want any man to have gain sin over his life, over him. He asked men, he said, come over you, other human being. Come and judge between me and my vineyard. I love his question in verse 4. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look that it should bring forth grace, Brought it forth to white graves. Is there any other thing that you know that is expected of me as the owner of this vineyard? I beg, tell me now. 
and judge if this vineyard has done well and has treated me well. I can see Savior this morning saying that this will not continue, but I'm bringing human beings to come and be my judge. I can see the Lord, I can see the Lord coming down to the form of human and is bringing men to this situation. Even you, human being, judge between me and this one hand. This morning I want to ask you the same thing under the permission of the Holy Spirit. I want you to judge between your life. Be the judge of your life. Be the judge of the way you are handling God. No reference for the Lord. You come to his presence, no fear. When I was in Noka, I had a dream. I, I, I saw a picture of a woman. Nobody, I don't need anybody to tell me that it's from Catholic. The offering box was like that. And the altar and the, 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 the man just entered to the church and did like this. I was looking at her and I said, what is this one doing here? But I had an understanding. The woman came to that service with the reality there is Almighty here. Do you think he's bound down? She's, she was bound down for to this basket. Oh God! He, she looked, said, "Jehovah is here. We've named this place after him." And the woman was just like that. The same woman. When it was time for us to drop our tithe and offering, they opened it like this. The woman just like almost at two knees to drop the money. Reference for Yahweh. Reference for God. But you know one thing I've studied today? When we come to church, sir, daddy, let me have my phone, please. Let me have my phone. Thank you, sir. You see, Reverend Kunat is preaching. This is my phone. This is the phone. What are you seeing? What are you seeing now? This one is just busy in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The Lord is saying something. It will not continue. It will. It will not. It will never continue this way. That is why he's bringing us to this understanding this morning. That judge. People are the extension that Lord will bless you. Are we together this morning? Some people they will be busy discussing at the extension when the word of, when Jehovah is talking here. George, I go to the last aspect. Are you in the service this morning? You are. You have something to tell, tell the Lord. Because the Lord is asking a question here. And I will give us space for one, two minutes to do that prayer. The Lord is asking a question. And the question is that, is there any other thing that you think I should do that I have not done? It's a question. And I will give you one, two minutes before we close to talk to your father. The Lord is saying, is there any other thing you know, Enoch, that I should do to make your life to be fruitful? Because the reason for all these things is because I want good food from you. And you are saying that, God, it remains this one, no. Say, make you tell me. Tell me, let me know. The last aspect. And now go to verse 5. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the edge thereof. The first thing that Lord said that I will remove your protection. You will be a defenseless human being. Every tiny and little thing will make mess of you. Every little and tiny situation of life will make mess of you. Satan couldn't reach out to Job because there was an hedge the Lord made around him. The Lord is saying, you have an hedge too. That's why you travel. You see death. You see people wasting away. But you can only see because there is an hedge around you. The Lord he said, the first thing I will do, I will remove my security. Invisible security. 
that I've installed into you, I will remove it. You'll be defenseless. I will take away the hedge thereof and you shall be hitting up. I will break down the wall thereof and men and situation will trek on you. Ordinary headache will not allow you to sleep. You take parastamol, ibrofin, whatever, take. They will make mess of you. Oh Lord, verse 6. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned. It shall not be digged. But there shall come up. God, don't do this, Lord. Don't do this to us because we'll not be able to bear it. The Lord is saying the life that I've been bringing out you know, all these good, good testimonies, you begin to see prayers and thoughts. I will also command the cloud that have been raining and raining. You have been expressing overflow. You've been expressing, you know, erosion. Because I always open heavens unto you. I will cause heaven to cease. And the rain, no rain upon it. For this one yard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. And men of Judah is pleasant plants. And he look for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, they cry. Woe unto them that join house to house. The Lord is not coming to the matter. The Lord is saying that I can see you. You are joining house to house. You are joining them. You are just a month in wealth and property. The one you need, the one you don't need. At the expense of his own house. This shall not continue. When I do this, you will know that I, the Lord, is the one that is in action. I asked a question last week during our Sunday school in Oka. The passage we studied in our Sunday school talked about um, participating in the, on the table, Lord's Supper, in an unworthy manner. And the text revealed to us that some, they developed sickness and some actually died. I raised a question in my Sunday school class. That are we really, are we sure that people are dying today because they are partaking of this thing in an unworthy manner? Are you sure people are growing, uh, they are having sickness because of that? A member of the class answered, said, sir, uh, uh, I don't know, but I want to tell you that people are dying. Oh. But you should know that those dead people, they cannot talk to tell you what killed them. Do you agree? Many people are carrying a lot of ailments in their body today because they are insulting God. You are chatting with your friend in the service. You can't try that one with somebody. Why are you handling God that way? Sunday school is going on now, everywhere. You are outside there, you are still talking for one hour. Sunday school is on. You are outside this thing. The Lord is asking this morning, why are you treating me this way? If you can't wait for Sunday school, go your house. Enough of this mockery of the word of God and of his servants. The Lord said, it will not continue this way. As I close, let's turn together to the book of Matthew chapter 3. Verse 10. And now also the axe is laid Unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth what type of fruit? Good fruit is you die and cast into the fire. The passage we consider today is from the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. Consistency. 
of God's mind. The issue that Lord is bringing forth this morning before us is not that of fruitlessness. It's not fruitlessness. The Lord said that you are producing fruits, but these fruits of yours, they are not edible. They are irritating. I cannot eat it. We have different age groups in the church. Maybe you are not aware. From this age to this age, you belong to this age group. And each, each age group, they have their attached mission field. From 30, 36 to 49, you have your group. 50 and above, you have your group. Men of Isaka, Jedida, all of us, we have our group. Deborah, Doka, Salome, we have our different groups. Mission age group. May I quickly ask you this question? When last did you visit your own mission field? Listen this morning and listen well. When was your last time with your age group to your mission field? This is not about bad food. Bad food. Bad fruit. I don't know what has graduated you from being part of a mission trip to a different mission fields. I pray that Lord will help our deacons more and more. I'm trusting the Lord, our deacons, they have their mission aid group as they will go. We go together. Though we take permission from pastor because we have responsibility during Sunday service. Our counselors in the church, you have responsibility. But are you now saying that that responsibility has choked you throughout one year and you didn't visit your mission field? It's a bad fruit. Three days fasting and prayer. You will not even come to anything. Your name is Sunday, Sunday, that I pray. Sunday morning, see another Sunday morning. You can't grow like this. Your work with God cannot be solid if you go this way. Sunday morning to Sunday morning. Discipleship is, is, is on Monday. They are nothing but to you is nothing. You have your, your excuses. I can hear many of you say, hey, hey, you see, my mind is the thing. Your, it's not your mind. Your mind is not only the thing. The Lord is simply saying this morning, it will not continue this way. It will not. It won't. He has announced to us, but I'm very happy to announce to you that from Isaiah chapter 5 we read, the word he used is, I will. Is that the word? I will. You can cry to the Lord before he will execute his intention. His intention is that it will not continue this way. Let me go in terms of money. How much your, is your contribution in terms of Naira, in terms of dollar and whatever to the work of missions in 2017? Our church in Noka, we still travel the leadership asked me to go last week and I was there. And I was talking with the king fire me I said, if somebody is not a Baptist to the core, that the blood that is running from head to toes is a Baptist, he can worship in this place. The situation is growing worse every day. Very dirty. I was there for seven years. I know the way I, God used me to labor as if one would die. They have to wear this your church. You ask them, say, oh, they know images. There is one popular artist there, images. I said, it's the same thing. Oh, that is your church. We have shops in the same building. The EC member, they were having a meeting with us. They told us that in any moment from now, you will see a aroma. I said, you people are talking as if I'm from Suru, Lele, Lagos. Have you forgotten that I was even here this year as a pastor of this church? All these things you are saying are not new to me. In the course of the service, there is this, this uh, uh, food uh, caterer down, down the, the first floor of the church. Every Sunday, the woman will be cooking. Different aroma will come into the church. How much is the, is the money that we need to position our work in Southeast? How much is the money? All our work in Southeast, we don't have identity in terms of our property. 
It's not because we don't want, we don't, we just want to acquire property. No, that's not the point. But where we are, we have tried to get better hold. We've tried to look for land to lease, all to no avail. And the pastors are toiling and they are sweating, and the location is not correct. A plot of land in Oka now. Good location. We are going to see nine million naira. Are we now saying we cannot afford eighteen million naira to get two plot of land? To give the work in southeast a better look and good direction. But the Lord is saying from this passage we read that I see my house of Israel, what they are doing, even in Lagos and in different places, they are joining house to house. They are joining house to house. They have property all over the country, and my work is going this way. But to them, the Lord is saying, no, you don't want it. That cloud, that heaven, sorry, that, that heaven that is pouring rain and pouring rain and pouring rain upon you and as you are getting this rain, as you are drinking it, as you are using it to cook, as you are reserving it, as you are storing, storing it, the Lord is saying, I will cause that heaven to do what? To be short. Because the water you are getting for you to allow it to flow to your family and to your children, thank God they are doing fine. The next thing the Lord is expecting that the thing will flow to his work. But instead for you to allow it to flow to his work, you are adding house to another house. The Lord says it will not continue. I bring the voice of the Lord to you this last mission hour of this year in preparation for what the Lord wants to do in the year 2018 through you. The Lord is saying, our work in Akure, the King Wale was there last week, last Sunday. He was there and he posted pictures to us. But as a person that has been receiving reports every month from our pastors, I know the state of each church. Akura is also on rented apartments. Our Usa section, they are overflowing. The church cannot take Ausa and Yoru, uh, English brethren. Everything jam back. Everything is like the house of Abalist. How much is a plot of land in Akure? 7,000 has done that. Are we saying we cannot afford 14,000 to get two plots? Of millions. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We read in the Act of Apostles to the early church. The early church. The men that have property, they sold it. And bring the money to the feet of the apostle. And the Bible says nobody had need in their midst. And we need to stop. But this is the mind of Christ. It hurts is bleeding. And the Lord is saying, I know those of you, I know the quantity of rain that have released your life. You can't deny it, it's aware of it. You can't deny it. He's aware of it. He's the one. He's the owner of the heaven. He's the one that is opening it up for you. This, no, this door, you knock it. They open the contract for you. And after you executed the, pro, uh, the whole project, you have 52 million naira. And then you, 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 you sat down with your wife. Madam, be careful. Advise your husband very well. And two of you in your sitting room or in your bedroom, you are discussing on what to do with this rain that Lord sent again. And say, honey, I think we have to be thinking of property in Dubai. The Lord is sending you money today. The Lord is sending you money. I can see many of us still laughing. What have made me to shed tears? The Lord, from uh, Matthew chapter 3, said, The axe, my axe of judgment is already on the root. He knows that he's sending you rain. I want us to pray this morning. It's a way where you are keeping those things. He said, if you don't do it, two acres of land will be sold for 10,000 10, in the, from this passage. He said, all those things you are piling, you are piling, I will make them to liquidate. All those things you are gathering, I will make my God to come over them. He can do it. Some people bought shares in years ago. What do you realize of that? National Bank, carry your money away. Thousands of naras. The Lord said, I'm into that business again. If you don't repent, I'm saying that business, I'm doing all of this on a purpose. 
you want to be stirring things up. In this part of the world, we are moth, rust, and thieves and robbers where they come and make ways. If that's what you want to do, I will close the heaven. I will close my heaven. Where have you stored these waters? Where have you stored the blessings of the Lord? Where have you kept the resources of God? If someone, they are there in the field, they are laboring, they are shedding tears because the atmosphere is not conducive for the work. But the Lord has blessed you so that the atmosphere could be better for them. Why will you not respond to the Lord? The Lord is saying this will not continue. For you to be in the church and Sunday school is going on and you stay outside there and you are talking. The Lord said, this one will not continue. You come to service, you cannot switch up your phone. You are chatting while the word of God is going on. Can you do that one before, Buari? If you cannot do that one before, ordinary human being, why are you treating God this way? It shall not continue. And I'll continue. I want you to respond. Blessed Savior, I can see the picture of my life. We can see Bible that you are holding Bible, but you are doing something else in the presence of God that has saved you, that has redeemed you. The Lord said every, every Monday to Friday, I can see you when you wake up. For him, you are awake already. You will dress as you drive. But on Sunday, you wake up, even 9 o'clock, for you to dress. By 10 o'clock, you're on your way to church to come and show yourself, but not for my service. The Lord is saying, this will not continue. It will not continue. He has come to make his mind known unto you. Has the Lord, Lord, have mercy upon me. The Lord has given you healing ministry. You know it. The Lord has blessed you with healing power. We have hospital ministry. You don't join them. The Lord has given you the word of comfort to those that are broken hearted. Oh, we have prison ministry. You will not join them. We have drama ministry. You can act very well. You don't join them. All you want is Sunday. Let me come on Sunday. Let me enjoy myself and go. Midweek service in 2017. How many midweek service have you attended? This shall not continue. If it is work that is not allowing you to do it, the Lord is saying, I will take away that job so that you can have time for me. Because to him, your soul is very, very important. Anything that will not allow you to serve the Lord, the Lord has come to announce, I will relieve you because I will take that thing. Are you in the house this morning? I said, Daddy, you've spoken to me and I'm saying, Lord, forgive me. I heard your voice. I will amend my way. I want, to also, I want you to raise up here and I want to pray with you. Say, Daddy, I'm here. Thank you, my brother. Any other person in the house, I want to pray. I want to pray. Daddy, I've heard your voice. Please show me mercy. Thank you. Those of you who are making that comment, just stand up on your feet. Just stand up on your feet. I want to pray with you. The Lord is saying, I've not cut your root. It's just that I've placed my axe. But it's your attitude that will determine what I will do. If God wants to cut you, he will not bring this message. That is it. But because he wants to show you mercy, that's why. Any other person want to join these people? I want to pray. I want to pray. The Lord said, all those reservoirs where you are keeping his resources, it will make them, it will make nonsense of that your reservoir. All those reservoirs where you are keeping his resources that is meant for missions, the Lord is saying, I will know where you are keeping them. I will make nonsense of them. Any other person, I will wait for you. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Thank you. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Say, Jesus, have mercy upon me. As I'm going into the new year, my attitude will change. My attitude will change to the things of God. Lord Jesus, we want to appreciate you for this morning. And we come as penitent sinners with our hearts in full realization of our shortcomings. Lord, we know that if your intention, your ultimate intention is to destroy us, you will not bring this instruction. But all you want from us is for us to repent and turn a new leaf. Lord, we've heard your voice and this is our response. The Lord that you forgive us, you will help us to amend our ways in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, by the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary, Lord, please wash us. Make us clean. Make us 
and bless us with better hearts, with better attitude. Thank you for spending these few minutes listening to the Word of God. We pray that His grace and glory will always be with you. Have a lovely week and see you next time.